Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, and our affiliates and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any person, or that an investment in such securities will be profitable in general. Given the nature of the companies profiled and a lack of an active trading market for their securities, investing is highly speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its hosts for the profile coverage. From time to time, we sell shares the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stock if we are speaking about interviewing or covering a public company who has paid us compensation. Specific questions on compensation can be directed to producer at sullyentertainmentgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before purchasing any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our listeners to invest carefully and read the investor information available at the websites on the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC at sec.gov or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at finra.org. Welcome aboard. Welcome to The Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is The Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. Hey, it's Costa. Dropping a little knowledge about something that I really enjoy, sports wagering. And now with the evolution of telephone technology, it's never been easier to do. Online sports betting has only been around the last 26 years or so, with a site called Every Game, and others soon followed. Betfair came along in 2000, and this site allowed customers to make bets with other customers. Well, a major step forward came about two years later when live betting was introduced for the first time, allowing bettors to place wagers on a sporting event while it was taking place. This was an instant success. It was a huge leap to where mobile betting is today, making it possible to place wagers using a phone, tablet, or other mobile device. In 1992, the Professional and Amateur Sports, the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, also known as PASPA, was a law. It was judicially overturned in 2018 that was meant to define the legal status of sports betting throughout the United States. Well, this act effectively tried to outlaw sports betting nationwide, excluding a few states. But as soon as it was overturned, seven states legalized and launched sports betting within just the first six months. Two of those states, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, now have sports betting industries that handle several billion dollars a year in wagers. Dozens of states have now either legalized or introduced legislation for regulated sports betting. The proliferation of smartphone ownership has fueled the growth of sports betting. There are now more than 2.71 billion smartphone users in the world today, meaning that 35.13% of people own a smartphone worldwide. And people with those smartphones now live in 26 of the 50 states which have some form of legal sports betting, including Washington, D.C. Some of these states have not yet launched their industries, while others are operating through tribal gaming compacts without going through further discussions with the government on the matter. With the different sports betting apps, such as Circus Sports, which I use, FanDuel, DraftKings, just to name a few, we will soon see the day in which legal sports wagering is available in every state in the country.